this time it happened in the form of James Blake sending me a DM. Can't have anyone thinking that this was some calculated rollout. Russ said, tomorrow I'm launching a voting platform that I built. Members can vote on unreleased music, merch, etc. Hell yeah! But then I zoom out and I realize, you know what? DIY. DIYers, it has been quite the week for your friend Curtis King. After I did a video last Monday speaking about James Blake's announcement of a platform that he is aligned with called Vault. A lot of you left comments on it, some of which that echoed the disappointment that I think a lot of independent artists had because we felt kind of the same, that man, this is something that's already out. We expected it to be something more. Now, mind you, when I make these videos, I'm never making these videos expecting for the artist to see it, but I always make sure what I say is something I would stand on in the event, like it's happened before, an artist reaches out. And this time it happened in the form of James Blake sending me a DM. Now, what was funny is that at first he hit me with a follow on Twitter and I was like, what's he doing? Then he hit me with a follow on Instagram and I said, oh no. And then I got the DM and I was like, oh no, cuz man, oh, he mad at me, he mad at me. I was like, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me just read the message. Send me a DM in response to the video and he said, hi, hope you're good, man. Thanks for the coverage of the Vault stuff. Just wanted to send you a screenshot of my initial messages with David Greenstein, who runs Vault. He is also the founder of Sound XYZ. Uh, that's some information I found out after the video went up. It's, it's important to know this information, especially if we're doing our homework. He sends me the screenshot. It's important that if I'm going to be as loud about the criticism, we got to be just as loud about the truth. We don't got to be, but I'm going to be. And that's what I intend to do. So he sends me a screenshot. I'm not going to share the screenshot here, but he's basically having a conversation with David. He made the statements, mind you, about independence and about how the audience is brainwashed by streaming and thinking that music has no value on the 3rd of March. So he said, notice the timestamps. No problem with you thinking it's a good solution to any problem, but I can't have anyone thinking that this was some calculated rollout I'd thought about before those tweets that started all this. He also says, because my heart is true on this one. I genuinely care and I never said that this was the one solution to the entire problem. But David had Vault almost ready to go when I met him and I just love the idea and wanted to partner up. Plus, we haven't even got off the ground yet or worked through what this is really going to be in the future. Remember, when Spotify started, it was super simple and they just kept adding till it became what it is today, like any platform. Be well, mate. Continue doing great work. Really enjoy your stuff. First and foremost, James, you did not have to reach out. And I echo the same thing that I said here in my response. And I'll share that with you guys, too. This is just for transparency. This is not about putting nobody on blast. I just want to make sure the information is out there and there's public record of it. I said, hey, James, I appreciate you reaching out and offering some context because you absolutely didn't have to. Now, beyond just my criticism of the platform in its early stages and my general commentary, I hope you were able to see it from my perspective as well. I think with you being a true artist and genius at your craft, we set the bar high when you said you had a fresh solution to a problem that affects us all. Perhaps we set it too high for a brand new startup, but many of us are ready for solutions that move the needle and not just another subscription. With that said, if you're open to it, I would love for you to come on a platform to discuss what you have planned for Vault and where I might have missed the mark in my video. And that offer's still there, even though my man's left me on red. <laughs> because once again, he don't owe me that conversation. But I still feel the way that I felt before these videos went live, and I had to make sure that I stood on that. Because regardless of where a platform, and this is not anything personal to his platform, regardless of where this platform goes, it is still a platform external from the platform we should be building up, which is our website stand on that that's that's not a hard statement to decipher or understand and i'm not saying he had any difficulty with that but i think a lot of people are missing what my goal is in this it's crazy i think that he compares himself to spotify i don't know if that's the comparison you want to have brother <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's the one you want to have not right now right now they, they, they are alienating the shit out of artists who care about this art form but in the midst of that kind of switching gears here i thought there was something really interesting that Russ is testing out on his own website. And I think this is something that is more aligned with the solutions that we're getting at. He posted these two messages here on his Twitter, and I'm going to share them here with you right now. He said, fans, 
Peep this. Russ said, tomorrow I'm launching a voting platform that I built. Cost me about 40K for transparency, where Russ World, his website, members can vote on unreleased music, set lists, cities to tour, merch, etc. For now, it's just unreleased music. I think democratizing the dynamic between artists and fans is long overdue. When you walk in a restaurant, the chef has made a menu that he loves. Let's assume. As a customer, you have no say in that. However, you are allowed to order what you want off the menu. I think artists are chefs and should make whatever they want. However, after we make the food we love, I think fans should have input on what ends up on their plate. Their Spotify, Apple, playlists, etc. that they have to pay for without having input on what gets served to them. Fair statement. Every unreleased song I have, I love. So whatever gets the most votes is a win for me and y'all. I think this is going to revolutionize the music business, primarily on the output of songs and choosing where to tour. Exciting times. Here's what I feel like is a difference, because these are things that he's sharing where you're basically, and I think he talks about it here. You're basically looking at your audience as a focus group. You're asking your most dedicated fans what they want to see, what they value, and then making some fact-based decisions about where to move next as an independent artist. I think, I think that's how we should all, honestly. This is one of the moments where it's like, if you have an audience, we, sh we should all be preparing to have these kind of conversations with our core audience. Now, he says, also worth being said that there's, a, there's definitely an unhealthy attachment to results with music that we as artists have sometimes, especially nowadays. I think this is gonna help temper that by managing expectations. Same goes for picking what cities to tour, especially for up and coming artists who don't have tour history to rely on. But yeah, I'm super excited. Can't wait to let y'all pick what y'all want off the menu. Now, I in the past have said a lot about our necessity as artists to lead the way. And I still feel that way. I think that we absolutely should be leading the way creatively. But I think what's a difference here is that he's saying, I'm going to make what I love the same way a chef is able to make the menu they love. You just get to choose what you want specifically from the menu. So with this approach, I was already expecting, like, before I knew what Russ World was, because I'm not a member, I was thinking like, oh, God, is this another app? <laughs> is this another platform? And then once again, Russ defies that. And this to me is the difference of kind of the criticism I had of James Blake's alliance with Vault. This is what it looks like on his website right now. Let me actually go full screen. First thing I want you to notice, the URL is vault.russworld.com. Everything leads back to the most important part, his website. Matter of fact, at the top of it, you can literally click back to his website. Pretty cool. Now, with that said, I thought what made this interesting beyond just the dark and light mode is that you can listen to these songs, but you got to sign in. So this requires you to have some kind of a, of a membership based situation going on with the website. But on Shopify, they make that really easy with apps that you can add on. With that said, I think this is a really dope thing because now the audience is able to listen. His hardcore diehard fans who have the time to go the extra mile and do this are able to give him sort of a, a micro viewpoint of what it could look like when he releases this out to the masses. They play the song and before, I think he might have closed the voting. There's a thumbs up, thumbs down, but this is all based on the website. Now, I don't know what his plans are for it in terms of whether he's going to make this an app but I think that would be genius if it was an app add-on for a Shopify. I think a lot of these direct-to-consumer, independent, pro-independent apps and websites don't recognize, we don't want to make you guys the superstars no more. We don't want to build up the value of your company that we have no equity in just for you to sell this shit off and then get rid of the people who are part of the core of it because they don't abide by the new guidelines that help build up your platform. We're not stupid. Nah, and I'm still not content till I'm dominated in every single continent. My shit go stupid. You don't think then use your common sense. I did your wire and I know that I'm a brother. When they play that new king, all the DIYs go crazy. All the DIYs go crazy. All the DIYs go crazy. When they play that new king, all the DIYs go crazy. All the DIYs go crazy. So when I see something like this, I think to myself, this is interesting because if this becomes sort of like a app that you can add on to your own website, it doesn't need to be all in the videos, dancing, 
Shout out to Suge Knight. It don't got to be the center focus. It can be something that just becomes an actual tool that helps independent artists that do this as a business. Now, there's some more tweets I want to highlight that we're kind of following up. I guess some of his fans who might be artists themselves had some criticism of this approach and he wanted to give it more clarity. The criticism I'm guessing was more so about an artist should be the one that chooses what songs go out of da 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 and this won't work for every, uh, the same complaint people have, typically from folks who ain't doing shit. But he said, I wanted to expand on the importance of keeping your feelings about your creativity separate from the public. I think the night you made what you wanted in a studio, that song is a success off rip. I like that. That should be kept sacred. Your expression doesn't need to be public for it to be validated. You already expressed yourself the night you made the song. Choosing what goes out, in my opinion, shouldn't be as much of an emotional, personal decision because like I said, my expression was validated the night I made the song. Allowing the consumer a say in what ends up on their plate I think is going to help remove some of the personal, emotional attachment to the results of the song. Once again, I already made what I love the night I made it. Whatever the fans vote for, it's okay with me because I love it all and I already succeeded creatively. Now it's a matter of giving people a product they actually want. Yes, artists, it's a business. This is the music business. The goal is to keep those two things separate, though, in my opinion. Uh, one last tweet here before I give my final thoughts. He says the inspiration behind the voting platform was a realization that every artist has their own focus group internally. Talk about it, whether that's people who work at your label or your close friends, etc. But we share music with our internal focus group and take their votes into consideration and move forward accordingly. All the voting platform does is turn fans into a big focus group, since realistically, outside of the artist, their opinion is the only one that matters. Yes. And once again, this isn't a vote on what song should be made. That's sacred to the artist. This is a vote on what should go out and who better to be your focus group than your fans. This kind of answers a few different questions that I ask when I see some of the, the pushback to folks who don't understand just the basic math of direct to consumer or the necessity of an up and coming artist to understand the business before they actually get into it. it, it it's, it's almost like telling somebody who has aspirations to be a lawyer, wait until you pass the bar before you study how to pass the bar is what I feel like a lot of people push this message, not just to direct to consumer, but they push this message on artists who they're telling not to make albums. And my question is, how do you learn to make albums through making a shit ton of singles that have nothing to do with each other? How do you make a great album, I should say? But then I zoom out and I realize, you know what? The reason why there's so much pushback and the people that that pushback is coming back from are people who don't want to do this work. They look at it like it's an extra step entirely for them to have to create some kind of a survey, some kind of a voting system and, and listen to the input of, I'm realizing there's a lot of people who don't have an audience because they don't realize what that exchange actually is. And when you have an audience, there's a certain responsibility, especially if you're serving a product that you're expecting their money from, there's a certain type of of humility. There's a certain type of harmony that must be established between you and that audience. A certain amount of respect that you must have that you'll give it naturally without it compromising your initial goals with the art. That's just a part of having a fan base. And when you have a supporter group that's a super fan base, it's different from your streamers. Trying to apply streaming logic of streaming fans to people who take out their credit card, look at the numbers, look at the three days, the expiration date, and then pay for your music is a disservice to those customers. They're not the same people that stream music. Streaming is not, I've said it before, is not a buying decision. The only buying decision that was made was whether they're gonna use Spotify, Apple Music, or Tidal, or whatever else. After that, everything is so casual. Hey, this video just went viral. What's that song? Cool, I wanna add it to my playlist. It costs them nothing except for time. But when somebody sits there in front of your, your website, that is not everybody. People make a good point. They're like, man, that's not, people just don't do that. No, no, no. There are a smaller amount of people who do that today as opposed to the CD era. But those people absolutely exist and they're just as on fire about supporting the artist as they've ever been. Because now they get to experience an artist in ways that you couldn't quite experience when it was just through MTV, just through BET, or just through seeing clips of them through VHS tapes or, you know, extra bonuses on a DVD that came along with the CD. It's a different situation when you feel like you know your favorite rappers, independent rapper, I should say, favorite rappers' child's name, when they were born, their wife's name 
doing, what their wife's into. It's a different experience and a different relationship. So when you go the extra mile and you have super fans who are like, wait a minute, I love whatever you do, but you're going to let me have a choice into what song comes out next that I haven't heard? Hell yeah. You know, there's not like a, I, I assume, I don't know for a fact, there's not a payment gateway system. I just have to be a member of this on the other side. I see that he was even sending out, Russ was sending out SMS text messages, letting them know, hey, you guys crash Russ World. That's a good problem to have. I'd rather them crash Russ World than crash something that's an extension of Spotify. Moving forward, DIYers, my last final statements on this, man. Once again, I got to say shout out to James Blake. Uh, hope you're okay with me disclosing that you sent that message. It sounded like you wanted it to be something that was publicly known. And so it's nothing to try to embarrass or, or try to aha. I have no interest in any of that. What I am here to do is ensure that I continue to provide the information. If it, even if I don't have the information, the content, the reactionary content that can lead them down a truly independent road. I salute you. I salute all the artists and the invitation is always open, my friend. Friend. But the only intent here is to ensure that independent artists stay truly independent and that we use every tool possible and that we also use the most important one that nobody can sell us, our mind, for critical thinking when it's necessary and it's always necessary. But DIYers, those are my thoughts. You let me know what you think. D -D -D -I -Y. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.